Hi, I'm Hassel. And I'm JP. And this is Pulled Corks. Podcast. <laughs> All right. Today we have a special guest, uh, Neil Walsh, joining us here on Pull the Pulled Corks podcast. Uh, Neil is in New York and right. he is a fanatic about uh, fortified wine. He's done a lot of work in the wine industry. Uh, He's done work as a marketing consultant. He has a WSCT level two, and he's going to continue his uh, wine education with WSCT. Uh, at the moment, he's most passionate about sherry and uh, sharing this amazing wine with the world, and that's what he's going to be talking to us about tonight. Hi, Neil. Hey, Hassel. Hey, JP. How you doing? Thanks for having me on the show. I love the show. I'm a big fan. Listen to all your episodes. Um, read a lot on the website, so it's um, it's glad to, glad to be on it. I'm drinking a little bit of sherry myself right now in a in a whiskey glass. Nice. So that's the way that <laughs> sherry is traditionally drunk. Um, speaking of traditions and sherry, there's a lot of for people that aren't aware that don't know what sherry is that are just getting into it for the first time. There's a lot of misunderstandings around sherry, starting with the little cups people sometimes drink it out of. Not to be drunk that way, really. <clears throat> You can just take a big glass or a big wine glass and serve a little bit. It's the best way to drink it. So um, how are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. I'm looking forward to this yeah. because, to be honest, I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know a lot about Sherry. Yeah, you're not in the minority. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I remember our trip to Jura when uh, you were tasting your first Van John with our friend Satoshi. Yes. And you you uh compared it to sherry and you didn't actually like the oxidized note so neil is all sherry oxidized right yeah i have i've had the sherries that i like right. and i think i just need to open myself up more and try some more sherries before i can give a a non-biased opinion <laughs> sure when it comes to oxidization yeah all, all sherry is by a okay so there, there are two major types of sherry. They're the ones that are that are fully oxidized, and then there's the ones that are that are not oxidized. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, basically, um, there are sherries that are sherries are almost all aged, um, whether they're aged under um, their own natural um, yeast, which is called flor or flower, um, and then they might be exposed to a small amount of oxid uh, oxidation. But something like a fino sherry or a manzanilla, which are the more fresh tasting sherries, those are um, those are grown under their own. It's like a protective layer of um, yeast that protects them from oxidization. Though some producers may then expose them to um, to, to the oxidization process, or um, if they're aged for any amount of time, um, there might be micro oxidization, which is different, which produces a different kind of um, uh, flavor. So you're not going to have that that strong, yeah oxidized taste so that nutty nutty flavor right right yeah the, the nutty flavor is the, what they call the nuttier sherries are the oxidized sherries yeah and that would be more of the what i'm drinking right now right here the um well this is actually an amontillado which is a little bit different because it's it's first um grown under floor and then it's it's oxidized after that um the oloroso sherry is actually the one that has that is um, completely oxidized and you get that really nutty flavor and it also concentrates and you start to get some kind of maybe candied fruits. It depends. You get a lot of good mouth feel. Um, so yeah, not all sherries are oxidized, but it, it, sherry, the thing about sherry is it's very much depending on the actual individual producer. And uh, that is also going to be um, informed by market demand. So over the years, sherries have, over the, the centuries, sherries have changed quite a bit in the way and their character. And I think they're even changing today. And you're going to see um, the older kind of less popular sherries are, are probably going to die out of the market and we'll have more um, fresher finos, manzanillas available, I believe. Yeah. Although, I don't know, there might be hope for cream sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there is. I was getting ready to ask about cream sherry. <laughs> so, I, I mean, uh, your average wine nerd is already yeah. like a rare specimen. And then yes. a fortified wine fanatic like you. Yeah. And then specializing in sherry. How, yeah. how, how did you go down that rabbit hole? Mm. 
how did you fall in love? With yeah, this? basically, um, so, you know, I, I really like, um, when it comes to wine, I think, yeah, your average wine nerd is, is basically a, a rare specimen. And I think one thing you find when you're doing your wine education is that there's a lot of emphasis on sherry, as there is on port, as there is on, um, well, as there is on like, you know, fortified wine, but, you know, sherry really gets a lot of time, especially in WSET classes, and you see it a lot. Psalms talk about, sommeliers talk about it a lot. Um, it's also wines that I just love. I can drink them all day, and I find they pair exceptionally well with food. Um, I myself um, eat a lot of, um, for whatever dietary reasons, I eat a lot of Asian cuisine, I eat a lot of uh, Mexican food, Central American food, and I find that sherry pairs particularly well with different types of international cuisines. Um, right now, I've been recently, I know we're all doing this, we're, we're all uh, at home because of COVID, but I've been doing a lot of vegan food, and I've been doing a lot of trying to get my diet right and i find sherry pairs very very well with with vegan foods as well and i make curries um you know it really i think the reason i love sherry is because it's so versatile um it's also misunderstood so i i kind of i get an under somebody that likes to root for the underdogs um i think the i think the kind of holy grail for a sommelier, your average sommelier who works in a, you know, a very accessible wine store, wine bar, is to really get great value wines at a, you know, at that really taste wonderful. And you have so many of them with sherry. You also have with port and Madeira as well. But whereas port, in my opinion, tends to be kind of one note, you know, there's, there's many kinds of ports, but it, it's, basically a sweeter red or a sweeter white wine that has a range of flavors but what what really interests me about sherry is the incredibly broad range from from bone dry to just just raisiny syrupy sweet um and everything in between and and how versatile that is and also i think with the predominance of international cuisine particularly in america i mean there's no place you can go in america where you're not going to get Korean barbecue, Vietnamese food, Mexican food as the primary type of food that people eat. You know, the, the international cuisine is just, it's, it's, it's here. Um, I think sometimes it's hard to pair traditional wines with, uh, with those foods, but I think in Sherry, you have a really good example of a, a very easy pairing wine. And in terms of price, John Paul Hassel, the price point couldn't be better for Sherry. I mean, generally speaking, you can get a bottle um, even with our, right now it's it's a bit expensive to buy European, some European wines in the States, but I got this bottle yesterday of Hartley and Gibson Amontillado Sherry for about um, 15 bucks, which about outside of Manhattan would probably be about 12 bucks. And it's just a wonderful drink. So um, also has a high alcohol content. Um, so it's, um, so this is like 17% alcohol. <laughs> so you can have a really good time, uh, not that expensive. And it pairs so well with so many different kinds of food. Yeah, I've noticed that price uh, the first time uh, JP brought a, a, a bottle of PX over to my yeah. house. And 1983. I, yeah, I couldn't believe how affordable it was. And like, uh, this is a new release. This is like this year's release, the 83 is. <laughs> so maybe we... we uh, go on a tangent here and, and talk a little bit about PX or what the acronym stands for. Do you want to go over the different types of sherry so you understand where PX lies mm -hmm. or do you want to start with P? Okay, so I can just, yeah, because. Good idea, let's do that. Let's roll into that, yeah. Yeah, well, let's just let's just start with the saying, where is sherry from? It's from Southern Spain. It's, it's in and Andalusia, which is really by the south of Spain, not too far from Gibraltar, on going kind of a little bit inland, but really on the, on the coast on the Atlantic coast, which is important. So it's, um, the area is called the Sherry Triangle or um, the Marca de Jerez. And so where does the word Sherry come from? First of all, most of the Sherry uh, bodegas, the places that make the Sherry are centered around a town called Jerez de la Frontera, which is the town of Jerez. When they spelled this in English, they, they, the, the um, they would spell it with an S, S-H-E-R-R-Y, instead of the J-E-R-E-Z, Jerez. And when it's in French, it's with an X, Erez, or um, X-E-R-E-Z. And um, 
but the real spelling is Jerez or Vinos de Jerez or the wines of Sherry. Those are, that's the actual term. Because Sherry was so much a product created for the, well, it's associated with two things. Trade is the first thing. And then for the British market. So Sherry was used, the, the wines of Jerez were used, put in big barrels and they were used as ballasts in ships. So they were used to, to weigh down ships during trade. So that was one thing that it's very much associated with um, mercantilism and trade. And then also it was drunk very widely throughout the Americas because it was imported back and forth um, between Europe and America. Um, so um, there, are, there are officially nine types of sherry. And if you learn about this in your... Um, in any of your your wine education class, you learn about wine types. There are actually a lot more than 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 nine. There are there are basically nine categories. The thing with sherry is it it's a blended product that's made for a market. Um, in, in many cases, there are kind of like one-offs or single barrels of sherry. We can discuss that in another episode, maybe. But I think for the, for the most people. It's, it's a blended product made for a particular market. So there, there, are, there are many variations. And historically, there were many different types of sherry. But today, there are about nine types that we're going to focus on. The driest types, and we're talking bone dry here, are called fino or fine and manzanilla. Manzanilla, um, manzanilla is only made in one town in, in, in Jerez. It's made in a, a port city called San Lucar de Barameda. And um, is that what you have right there? Yeah, the manzanilla. Yeah. The manzanilla. Okay, that's great stuff. I mean, that's just um, really great with seafood. Really just and a nice little one. bit of... Oh, La Gitana is great. That is a great brand. Oh, my God. So, um, and that's grown under very... That, 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 that sherry is, is made under very specific conditions to that, that town. Um, sometimes you even get a little bit of saltiness in there, don't you, JP, from the Atlantic? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's, that. that's what it's famous for, like. Yeah, it's really quite wonderful. So th those are two really dry, dry sherry. So we can discuss how to food pair them later because I think food pairing is the key to getting people to drink sherry. Um, like with many wines, if you don't have the perfect food to pair with it or a good enough food to pair with it, it it's kind of hard to put it in a context. You know, how, how is this wine great? Um, also, we're going to talk about a little bit later about um, making sherry parties maybe. Then you start to get into the more like um, kind of medium bodied wines. They're a little bit more complex. I mentioned before the Amontillado, which is also called a medium sherry. You'll see that around, that's an older term. Uh, Amontillado is where the, um, the floor will die and then it will, um, it will start to over time um, oxidize. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be put into a Solera system or an aging system. Um, there's another type of sherry called palo cortado, which is where the floor just naturally dies on its own. And this is why it's hard to say, are there any, you know, non-oxidized sherries? What sometimes happens is the floor or the, the yeast um, that comes naturally from the environment will just die too early and it will create something called a palo cortado, which is a something between a uh, oloroso and a, uh, a fino sherry. So it will be quite oxidized but it will also be quite new. So it's, it's a different kind of category. It's a bit of a fluke palo cortado, so you don't get that much of it. I, I saw a small bottle last week in a store for about 25 bucks, which is kind of on the higher end for sherry, unless we're talking about aged sherries, which is a whole different ball game. So those are four sherries I just covered, and they're all dry. So fino, manzanilla, amontillado, and oloroso are all dry. Now, most people associate sherry with being sweet. And why is that? Because historically, the, the British market, um, and this goes back to the 1700s, really loved sweeter, heavier wines. Port and sherry were just drunk as a matter of course um, in Great Britain. And then all the British colonies, again, it was associated with trade. And what they would do... Also, yeah. What's that? They traveled well. As well so. Oh, yeah, and it, it traveled very well, yeah. Um, what they would do is they would combine a drier wine like a Fino or a, a Monteado or a Oloroso. They don't, um, and they combine that with the sweeter wine. Now there are two sweet sherries, and this is where it gets really interesting. 
There are two sweet cherries available on the market today. One is called PX or Pedro Jimenez, which is a type of grape. And like I said before, this is the south of Spain. It's really hot, direct sunlight. What they do is they take the grapes, the Pedro Jimenez grapes, which now they get from outside of sherry. They don't only get them from the Jerez Triangle. And they dry them for a period of time. And they make a, a, they make a, um, a wine or they make a juice out of those dried grapes. Um, they also have um, uh, like a muscat or a muscadet type of wine called a uh, musca muscatel. Um, which is also a sweet wine. So when they combine those sweeter wines with the drier wines together, it's made what's called a cream sherry. Um, cream sherry was originally blended in England, and what they would do is they would um, they'd blend the sweet and the dry, and they would either age it in England or they would bottle it there and then send it out to the market. So cream sherry is just a term that comes from, the, the, the story goes that there was a woman tasting sherry in the uh, Harvey's um, of Bristol um, uh, basement, and she tried this new sherry, and she said, if sherry is milk, then this is the cream, and it became cream sherry. But it's, it's, it was basically almost exclusively created for the export market. Now, the interesting thing about Muscatel and PX is... Why do we have them? If you compare that, if you look at PX, uh, which is like, I don't have any right now. It's a very, it almost comes out like a syrup. It almost is like an aged balsamic vinegar, right? Yeah, it looks like soy sauce in your glass. It'll stay, like, <laughs> leave like that brown. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a heavy, mm -hmm. syrupy soy sauce. So yeah, one, uh, one of our winemaker friends calls it motor oil, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is like it is like motor oil. Has that like it's it almost is like um, what's that other stuff? Um, it, it it's it's a bit like slight. It's like alcoholic um, uh, like sap in a glass. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> motor oil is a good example. Um, it, and it looks like and sometimes it smells. It has a, it even has like a little bit of a a very very fresh, um smell to it. it i could see how like the, the between the the really raisiny alcohol when you smell it for the first time it can it can pack quite the punch so the the interesting thing about those wines and why they're so different than and, and every other wine available on the market really um those are probably closer to the wines that the greeks and the romans drank mm -hmm. um and one reason they were able to preserve mm -hmm. that tradition was because they had um for a period of time they had the Moors and um, running Spain, and they they were it was run by the Muslim Moors, and they, they weren't allowed to drink alcohol. So sometimes one thing you have in a lot of Muslim countries is they have um, these these very sweet drinks. Um, they they specifically serve them during Ramadan, where they'll break fast with these very very sweet syrups. Um, and that tradition is is very similar to the PX um, to the tradition of of creating. Um, the, the kind of base for PX wine. So one reason that Jerez still has these very, very dark concentrated wines is probably because that was something held over from the Romans that somehow was preserved under the Moors that's still there today. And because Jerez is kind of in the <clears throat> culturally in a, an, a more or less isolated place from the rest of, you know, um, Europe, you, you get these older traditions that, that last. So, you know, when you drink sherry, you're drinking something actually very, very old uh, with a lot of history and that's very versatile. So that's a really a, also a very cool thing um, to be taking part in that history, I think. And uh, personally, I, I love PX with uh, ice cream. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it handles ice cream really well. I think it handles all... Um, I've done a lot of stuff with PX. So, you know, if you're making like a Christmas cake, you can take PX and reconstitute dried fruit. Just let it sit in PX for a few days and it gets really nice cherries, any kind of um, uh, dried fruit. I, I, I think PX handles um, protein very well. Mm -hmm. So any kind of like um, what you'd normally have um, – um mozzarella with kind of like um um what is it balsamic vinegar i i, I would do px with balsamic vinegar also 
if you're really into balsamic vinegar, a lot of the stuff we get in America, and we could talk about sherry vinegar too. A lot of the stuff we get in America that poses balsamic vinegar is actually this kind of like watered down, very, very acidic, sweet product that has nothing to do with balsamic vinegar. Um, and balsamic vinegar is aged in a, in a kind of like, almost like a, a sherry system in these big, um, it, it's, it's an aged product, almost like a wine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that the, um, the difference is that, you know, PX is very, it's much cheaper than balsamic vinegar. Um, it has, it, it's just, it's really, really, um, it, it has a lot of, it has a lot of flavor. It has a lot of raisiny flavor. It has a lot of um, almost like a, sometimes like a charred treacly flavor. And it adds itself really, really well to a lot of protein. So for a much cheaper price than traditional balsamic vinegar, you can get a bottle of PX, put that on your, um, you can reduce it or you could put it on your um, mozzarella cheese. You can serve it with manchego cheese and guava. You can, there's a lot you could do in terms of uh, making it very accessible for, um, for food and certainly for um uh for ice cream it's amazing on ice cream as are a lot of the brown cherries by the way just yeah. just fantastic on ice cream it really and it really grips the protein um sherry vinegar is a whole other category what they do is they take the wines of sherry and they um they make them into these these aged vinegars um Again, they're really what most of what we get in the states that's called cooking sherry or sherry vinegars are these reconstituted products that might have some wine in them, but also have a lot of salt and, you know, low quality sugar and alcohol. And they're really not good products. They're not really very good products, but sherry vinegar is, is available. It has to be aged for a minimum of a certain number of years. Um, but like, um, but it's also a very syrupy product like uh, like uh, balsamic vinegar, um, but that's a whole other discussion. Sherry vinegar. People do confuse the two, though. Mm. Okay, so kind of like a, like a cream balsamic. Yeah, like a <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like a creamy balsamic. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're, they're, it's a real thing. Is cream, cream balsamic yeah, amazing? Oh, I don't know that. What is that? Yeah, yeah. it's crema, crema. Oh, crema balsamico. Yeah. Yeah. Crema balsamico. Okay. That's really good. thick. Uh, same, same way you put it in, in oil with bread or, or you put it on meat. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think really the, 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 that really high quality balsamic is just great on ice cream too. It's just, there's nothing better because you have the, that sweet acidic flavor that just cuts through the, 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 the fat and the, um, and mm-hmm. the protein. I mean, I've even done PX by putting it like in, in salads um just like um taking a bunch of uh, vegetables some protein mixing it together it could have like a steak salad and um it it cold with some kohlrabi anything it really i I feel it really really is a a great dressing so it's it's something you can add to and it's called pedro it's sold as pedro jimenez p-e-d-r-o jimenez um with spelled an x which is why it's called px um it's a little confusing when you look at the bottle sometimes because they call PX product of Spain, product of Jerez, wine of Jerez. It doesn't always carry the, um, this sherry, um, DO, uh, um, this DOC. This is what, this is how you can tell a wine is from sherry if it has this little thing mm-hmm. on the back. Um, that's because some of the grapes from uh, from uh, from PX don't come from sherry itself. They come from the it's the immediate region of of Jerez. So you know sometimes there are it can be confusing. But all Pedro Jimenez are basically sherry wines. Yeah, there it is on the back. It's called the um, um, Dominación de Origen. The the the, 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 yeah. the DO. Yeah. yeah, the DOC. Um, any, so what else do we want to talk about sherry guys? Um, we went over the, the basic types of sherry. Um, you, so yeah, that, that's, that's where PX lies. It lies in this very yeah. treacly, uh, syrupy kind of, yeah, sherry. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I really need to do adventure more because I mean, recently I've been drinking a lot of, uh, amphora wine, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, 
Calera style uh, orange wines and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've kind of really been turned on to a lot of the oxidized stuff recently. So mm -hmm. I guess I need to start dipping my toes into more uh, sherry because it's down that same path. Yeah. You, you like the orange wines? Oh, yeah. Love them. Yeah, they have some grip to them, don't they? They really have some, you get some mouthfeel to them. Um, I like the Saparavi. Is that the, um, the, the Georgian wine? Saparavi is Georgian, yep. yeah. But yeah. that's a red. Yeah, that's a red. Yeah. yeah, I just like the way that grips. Like, I, I like the mm. way the Georgian wines, yeah. they really oh, grip. Yeah, yeah it's, it's brutal tannins because they put the, the whole clusters with the stems into the amphora, just put a lid in, on it and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, they open it six months later and there's everything in it. contact, yeah. basically, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, it's I've, I've stem recently, and skin. Yeah. I recently just ordered, had a, uh, a, a set of four different wines, four different grapes that are all orange wines, and they all came from Portugal, and they're amazing. Mm. Really good. I, I actually, I talked on um, uh, one of the pulled cork shorts episodes that I did. I had one of those uh, Portuguese orange wines. Mm. Really good. Oh, one of the recent episodes about the pet nats or the orange one? It was uh, after the pet nat episode, I think. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that. Yeah. That's yep. cool. Good stuff. So I've been really getting into the oxidized stuff, so it'll be cool. I'll, I'll venture out into the sherries now and... Uh, expand yeah. my uh, palette <laughs> yeah absolutely it's great it's I, I, I mean I just... hassle you, you're a great korean chef so we we should try korean food and sherry next sure time. we should do that I'll, I'll start making the kimchi tomorrow <laughs> you know oh, that's right you you make kimchi right i forgot it. you you're 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 a prize-winning kimchi maker right award-winning kimchi maker that's correct award-winning kimchi maker i've heard this <laughs> i've heard some of the stories yeah. um i was actually thinking about different as i was preparing this a little bit i was thinking about different foods that you could eat with um like that pair well with sherry and korean food actually came to the top of my list um only because it's just so popular mm -hmm. i i think you know, when you have stores like H Mart in America, which is just a huge Korean supermarket that you get outside of any major American city now, it's uh, it's amazing. Um, I, I think sherry is a great f wine category for Korean food. Um, one thing that came to mind was um, japchae. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. The um, the yeah. Korean seafood pancakes. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I think the seafood version would pair very very well with manzanilla. Um, so I, I kind of came with um, some ideas of, of easy entry level sherries and then getting a little bit intermediate and then a little more advanced and then some food pairing ideas. Maybe we can bounce them off each other guys. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So um, for Oloroso sherry, which is that kind of, okay. Oloroso means huelo, um, to smell. It, it has a lot of, of, that's what it literally means. There's a lot of aromatics. Yeah, aromatics. So, um, you know, medium body, sometimes a fuller body has, has a real nice mouth grip. It has a lot of complexity in the taste. You're going to get probably a lot of, um, John P, JP, do you want to go over some of the, um, the, the characteristics of your typical Oloroso sherry, nutty cooked fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, you might get cooked, um, uh, like cooked peaches, cooked pears, cooked apples. Mm. Um, you might get a little bit of candy in there, some caramel. It's really complex and it really depends a lot yeah. on the producer. Anything else you want to? No, nothing to add here. Yeah, it's it's very complex, yeah. very aromatic. Yeah, the nuttiness is, is probably the most characteristic. Aroma. Yeah. And it might even seem a little sweet though it's not necessarily because of the aromatics it kind of tricks the yeah. the, the, the 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 caramel caramel characteristics like almost burnt caramel yeah it's, it's yeah it is interesting i feel that those kind of those 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 notes trick the um trick us into thinking it's sweeter than it actually is mm. yeah. yeah as you get with like a heavy oaked actually i found that like the heavily really overly oak chardonnays and stuff cover mm. the sweetness yeah to the point where you can't really taste it. Um, whereas yeah, like- They might be, yeah. They might be bone dry, but yeah, the, the vanilla notes and the butterscotch notes from the oak make them right. appear sweeter than they are. 
Right. Yeah. And then when you have like, like with Gewürztraminer, for example, that that's a very, it's actually not a very sweet wine at all, but the florals like make it appear sweeter than it is, isn't it? Um, and that really depends on the style. Yeah, that that depends, depends on the okay. style. Okay, I'm not an expert in Gewürztraminer. A, a German Gewürztraminer can be very, very sweet. Uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm talking about some Alsatians I've had that seem sweeter than they are. Okay. They're like... Just, that's that lychee... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that lychee notes. Yeah, and that that's kind of what informs its its food pairing of potentials. Okay, so I think with Oloroso because it has so much going on there, you can pair it with heavy, heavy, you know, really spiced foods. Um, kind of like South Carolina barbecue. That's the sweeter, I believe, barbecue style. That kind of like sweeter, more um, um, wet barbecue style that would pair really, really well with that. Um, Jamaican jerk chicken. I think that a lot also would pair really well with jerk chicken, um, you know, with or without the scotch bonnet so sauce. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's another question. Um, <laughs> any, any kind of like American style Chinese takeout. Yeah. You like, I love that stuff. I think America style Chinese takeout, because let's face it, we're, we don't always eat jerk chicken and people don't always eat complicated food a lot of people will still order food out and i think with that um oloroso sherry would be a, a perfect pairing because you have a lot of the, like the, the heavier um soy sauces and i think any kind of food that uses a darker soy sauce like cantonese food um maybe malaysian food um Ch chinese style thai food i think that would really really pair well with sherry yeah it's, it's uh, almost like Oloroso sherry uh, reminds me a lot of like Chinese Shaoxing, so the the Chinese ah. uh, dark rice wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just more refined. The sherry is much more refined and elegant than that. So it's it's like a really high end premium Shaoxing at a, a fraction of the price. Basically. Abs absolutely, I, I agree with that. In fact, I've given this to people from um, southern China who agree that. The one thing they said is that sherry doesn't have the, um, Shaoxing usually doesn't have the oxidative, um, I don't know, the nuttiness. They, 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 they are always like a little bit, they, they say something's different about it, but absolutely, mm -hmm. they, they say it does taste like Shaoxing. In fact, some of it smells like Shaoxing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that um, Amontillado sherry would pair really well with, in fact, a Shanghainese food, um, food from Shanghai, any food going down the Chinese coast where you really have a lot of seafood that's actually cooked with Shaoxin or cooked with um, the local um, uh, wine, rice wine. I think that'd be a great um, pairing for sherry, or you can even cook with sherry in uh, if any kind of fusion cuisine. Yeah, um, th that's what was an idea. Uh... For hassle, if we do Korean barbecue ribs, we could put some PX on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. You also have to remember, San Lu um, so, so um, Jerez de la Frontera is the, um, is the home of tapas. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not sure. Uh, you, you know Spain better than I do, John Paul. Is I, I think people that live in... Um, what is it best country up north san sebastian mm. also called yeah. there do they call themselves the home of tapas as well uh, they they are kind of like they they acknowledge that the tapas come from down south uh, but they but they have it. refined it they've perfected ah, okay. it and they they blended it with all kinds of culinary influences so they, they're the home of all culinary traditions yeah. Yeah, because I've I've heard a few I've heard I think it's the other place I've heard it referred to as the home of tapas. So you wonder which mm -hmm. one is, uh, yeah. But okay, that's good. Thanks for that background because it's it's helpful. Um, in terms of like so so I think that any kind of international tapas because you see a lot of tapas bars now that are going like J Japanese style tapas, Korean style tapas. Um, all I mean I've just um, all over America you see tapas bars that kind of bring in all kinds of international influences. Sherry is a great parent pairing is the traditional pairing with tapas. Um, so yeah, I think that Amontillado Sherry, I consider Manzanilla to be an intermediate level Sherry just because it's dry. It has a little more complexity than your Fino. Your... Oh, we lost audio. Time out. <laughs> Time out.
We lost audio. We lost you there for about three sentences. <laughs> Do, 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 do. <laughs> Elevator music. Elevator music. And Not we're back. Me. Okay. Uh, I'll leave back. this. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll start. I'll start from where I was. Okay. What's okay? Sounds good. Manzanilla. So manzanilla is, in my opinion, kind of an intermediate level sherry, and here's why I think that. It has a little more complexity than your average phenol, but, and you have that added element of the kind of salt water saltiness in there, which is another really nice thing. Pairs really well with, um, with seafood dishes, any kind of like the seafood japche, the Korean dish. Um, I think even, what do you call that? Sundofu, sundobu? Um, sundobu, the, yeah. Sundobu, yeah, the Korean, um, is that, uh, the, the Korean um, tofu hot pot with, um, with, um, uh, tofu, I think that would pair really well with um, with manzanilla. Risotto, any kind of, I think risotto pairs well with manzanilla just because I've had it with even kind of Italian style risotto where you, because it has the creaminess, it has the, the complexity. If your risotto has kind of protein in it, it would be a, like cream, it would be a really good thing. Um, there's also a thing called brown sherry. Now brown sherry is its own category. I had recently had a great one. Um, from the company Listau, um, and uh, we can put this up in the show notes. And it was a, it was called an East India sherry, mm -hmm. and it was an old style of sherry that was made like um, this very popular um, older style that was basically used uh, to transport on ships. And when it was transported on ships, it was really subjected to a lot of moving around and a lot of. Um, you know, heat uh, to get at the bottom of a ship and it, it aged really remarkably well. Um, the stuff is about, it retails for about $30 a bottle in America. Although again, I'm buying it in one of the most expensive markets in America. So probably $25 a bottle in the rest of the country. It has like notes of candied um, oranges, candied fruit, ginger, I think it would pair extremely well with any kind of ginger cookies, ginger cake. Um, if you've ever had a Jamaican black cake, that stuff is amazing. Mm. Um, any kind of, even any kind of like Caribbean cakes that I've had, it would pair really, really well with those things. And again, this is anything you would pair rum with, I think would pair really well with that kind of dark sherry. Um, also keep in mind when you want to pair with Indian food, Thai food, any of the hotter, spicier foods, South African food. Sweeter wines tend to go really well with them. But the thing you want to keep in mind is what are the flavors? What are the, what are the characteristics? What are the tasting notes of that wine? So if, if, if a dish you're eating has a lot of ginger notes in it, you'd want to pick a wine with a lot of ginger notes. And the reason is because you, it's really seems to be better when you match the notes in the wine with the notes in the food. Um, it's one reason that when you're picking a, a Gewürztraminer for Thai food, you may have the floral notes in the, in the rice or in the food that match very well with the notes in the, in the wine. So while I think it's often difficult to pair wine with um, newer cuisines like Indian food, you know, if you look to sherry, if you look to some other categories and not traditional wines like your Chardonnays and your Pinot Noirs, you get so many options. And honestly, so many more creative options that are really a lot more fun. And in the case of sherry, honestly, uh, affordable, you know, options, really, really, you know, well-priced options. Awesome. <laughs> so, so we have here a wine category that's versatile yeah that has a ton of styles to explore a ton, a ton. um it's affordable mm -hmm. and and it keeps well because it's fortified keeps very well one, one of the problems with sherry though that you have to consider and this is why i i'm putting this last category of advanced sherries a lot of sherry writers will say that fino sherry is the easiest one to get introduced to i don't agree with that at all Fino sherry has to be um, fresh. If it's not fresh, it, it, it really tastes stale after a while, and it's not 
much of a pleasure to drink. It just is like a, a really dry, bone dry wine. Um, I'd recommend having Fino Sherry for the first time with food, unless you really like, it's, it's a very austere wine. But the reason I recommend it with food is because I think if you have it with, sorry, for example, a, uh, a roast chicken, if you're really into roast chicken, that would be the, or if you, uh, if you ever have the, uh, the Puerto Rican dish, prenil, which is a roast, uh, roast shoulder of pork, really amazing stuff. That's the, you know, something that takes like 20 hours to cook, maybe your barbecue hassle. <laughs> um, those, yeah, those kind of like simple roasted meats, I think really, really go well with the Fino Sherry because it's just dry enough that it, it, it really handles the protein really, really well. Um, so, so besides Fino and Manzanilla, most sherries do age well. The, the problem is that once you open the bottles, you want to you want to drink them as you know within the. You can wait a few months, but not much more than that. And here's what happened with sherry. I think, a lot of times, cream sherry, that really kind of sweet sherry, was popular in England and America to a certain extent in the 70s and 80s. And what happened was bottles would just sit around bars for a while as it became less popular. And then when people would say, oh, let me try that. Let's put sherry light. You know, it would be up there on the, on the shelf with the, um, with the Dubonnet or with the um, Benedictine and Brandy, those older bottles that you know, nobody really drank. And it would be this oxidized, sweet kind of drink that didn't taste very good at all. So if you're going to open a bottle of sherry, that's why I recommend having it with friends. You know, try to get rid of it within a, a few months. But um, in terms of storing it, Cream sherries, brown sherries, olorosos, they, they can store pretty well. There is some debate as to how well they age. Um, and it really, again, it's very variable how they age. They, 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 they don't it, age sherries are kind of an uh, extreme geek market. Not many people are into the age, buying aged sherries. They do age particularly well. Um, there have been some important historical aged sherries that have sold for you know, a lot of money on the level with the Bordeaux and the, um, the Burgundies and whatnot. But it's, um, once you open the bottle, you do want to drink it within a, a reasonable period of time. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, those fortified wines, all of them, even like ports and, and uh, Madeiras, they're bulletproof. I mean, they've got, they've, they've been finding them in these old cellars in America and like Pennsylvania from like, Founding fathers have left behind, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing stuff. They they they, they, they when they, when they're in the bottle, right, sealed or whatever, they they, they handle particularly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. you can't uh, you know stick the cork back in a a burgundy and open it back up three months later. And, no, 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 you can't. <laughs> that would be horrible. Burgundy vinegar. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I mean, could you pump ozone on it? I don't mean, know all these new techniques, yeah. 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 Cool. Carabin. <laughs> yeah. Learning about all these uh, sherries. Um, I'm intrigued. My interest has peaked. Um, we'll have to do whenever we can uh, all get together again when... Uh, this all blows over. <laughs> we can yeah. we can uh, have a, a nice sherry tasting. Maybe do another episode like that as well here in the uh, fish uh, pulled cork studio. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I, I think also you know when you're thinking about how to introduce sherry at parties or whatnot, it's it's a good idea. I'll just give you a few like basic guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a wine pairing party where the wine is going to be um, you, where it's going to be like you know the one wine per, per meal or one wine per course or what, I don't know, depending on how you structure that. Um, you don't want to use a, an overpowering sherry if you're building up to a bigger wine. So the wine you're bigging up, building up to is like a bigger oak Chardonnay or um, a bolder, a, a very important, you know, um, Bordeaux or something that's that's kind of bigger, uh, even in America, Napa Valley, kind of fruity, big, big bold wine, which is what people like, you know. Um, it's better not to start off with an Amontillado sherry or with um, 
Oloroso sherry, anything that's going to leave a taste. The thing about sherry that you have to realize is it lingers. They tend to have a lot of length, um, which is why they're, in my opinion, really great wines. Um, it's the, You're going to taste it for quite a while. And if you're going to build up to something bigger, I, I think it would ruin the taste. So you might want to start off with like a fino sherry, a, a lighter Clément, like a Clément du whatever. I had a great Clément de Limol the other day, um, a Clément d'Alsace, kind of a lighter, like l lighter sparkling wine, lighter sherry, like a fino mm -hmm. sherry with uh, a fattier uh, appetizer, and then move your way up to a, a more complex um, wine. Pet um, nat next, I guess. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that? The next to pet nat. <laughs> yeah, next to pet nat. Yeah, I mean, but you, you don't, but you, you wouldn't want, I don't think you'd want to, um, the, you, there is a, there is a danger in overpowering sherry. Now, when you serve a more complex wine, you can then serve, I think, a, a stronger sherry as a, a dessert, like a cream sherry, like a brown sherry, uh, a muscatel. You could serve them as as dessert, but you want to be careful when serving them kind of a, a stronger, like nutty or, or really oxidized sherry before uh, the, the bigger wine. Um, also, you can do, again, a, a course of sherries, but again, you might want to start off with like a fino manzanilla, palo cortado, something for a drier, fresher, and then move your way up to something that's really, really um, uh, flavorful and, and um, yeah, um, um, aromatic. So that's the only recommendation I have for sherry. We can talk about pairings and courses, but I think for most people to, to, to have them do like a sherry party where every course is a sherry, that's just not reasonable. Right. It's not something that's really accessible. It's not something people will do. So I think adding one sherry to a, uh, a, a, a wine night is a good place to start off. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, JP. Um, yeah. When you took your, uh, when you were at the WSET campus in London, did you go to the sherry bar that's just right around the corner there uh, near the tower bridge? Oh yes. I, yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a place where we all three should meet up as soon as this COVID yeah, stuff yeah. is over. Sounds perfect. Sounds like a good deal. Mm. Sounds like a good deal. <laughs> yep, we should do that. That's that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're crazy anyway. So as soon as uh, everything's back to normal, we can travel and meet up and uh, bring all kinds of good. Uh, Maybe the socially distance at the sherry bar, or the, you know, they'll be a, maybe a reservation. You know, the new world. We don't know what it's going to look like. True, that's true. The reservations, but yeah, I would. I would. The last thing I recommend is make sure to drink sherry in a big enough glass, so you don't have. So you can really get to see what it smells like. Um, you don't want to drink it in those little small, tiny, tiny glass no. or those cool glass that have like the the big lid that look like tulips they, I think they, 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 they serve it that way in, um, in Jerez, mostly for tourists. There's a lot of controversy as to whether that's really the way to drink it. It doesn't seem like it is though. It's like a champagne flute. I mean, I'd much rather drink champagne from a wine glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. White wine glass. Yeah. Me too. I'm, I'm the same way. I don't, I mean, you know, they, they even, there was even a rumor that some British member of parliament used to serve, those uh those sherry and those big glasses with the big tops and the small bottoms to kind of rip off his guests and make them seem they were getting more than you know some of these historical things come from such bizarre <laughs> yeah so uh, but i agree with you but yeah drinking in a bigger glass is always better yeah. all right hey, i mean so for the next episode we might call you in again for for some talk about port or other fortified stuff so port Madeira yeah. anytime yeah let's let's do it <laughs> let's do it let's do yeah. it maybe neil will just be regular on the show we'll see Could be. <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. This, oh, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this i learned a lot this is a nice format i, I think we can a good conversation up. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah Kind of like the uh, like an episode of the Brady Bunch here that I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gone back and forth. <laughs> I'm the only one drinking. I haven't been drinking for weeks. I've been <clears throat> I've been good, you know, and now I'm. So we me me and JP were doing this thing. It's uh, 
this uh, running challenge, right? Because we're oh, both geez. marathon runners, and yeah. this, the Tennessee was it the, the Great Tennessee Marathon or the Great Tennessee something. The, the Great Virtual Race Across Tennessee. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's uh, it's a thousand kilometers. You have until August thirtieth to uh, wrap it up, and uh, so we've been hitting it pretty hard. So I've kind of went on this uh, pescatarian diet and with no alcohol, and and uh, we'll see. So we're, we're the great forward. virtual race across Tennessee is just that sounds like I, I need I need like to take my allergy pills now after just hearing that. That just yeah. <laughs> That scares me. Countryside. We've been doing it across the German countryside. Still, yeah. miles, as we log miles, a little counter goes across the state of Tennessee. <laughs> how, about the, how about the bar crawl across London? That sounds better to me. <laughs> as soon as it's possible. <laughs> I'm such a, yeah, I'm like, yeah. So I'm so bad when it comes to running or, yeah. Ugh. But we're so that's that's why uh, that's why I've had the bottle of water instead of a, instead of a glass of wine or a sherry or something. I was just trying to. Uh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Do you ever do cigars, Hassel? A little break for the liver, which all our viewers, you know, sometimes that's a good thing to do. Give the liver a break, take some time off from the drinking. I mean, we love. Yeah, it. you have to drink responsibly, right? It's very oh, important to drink responsibly. Not good for you. We're not gonna lie. <laughs> so, it's very important, yeah. Yeah. Like in moderation and so yeah, no, exactly. absolutely. So we've taken off. We've both dropped some some pounds and that's good. That's good. Are you um? Ha, do, do you smoke cigars, Hassel? Uh, on occasion, I will. I, I love a good uh, like. Sometimes me and uh, JP, there's the, in Neustadt. There's this nice uh, uh, cocktail bar there called uh, uh la boutique yeah. i've been there yeah and uh, there. we'll go there and have some uh some nice whiskeys and cigars and yeah. Yeah, he, has, he has this handcrafted cigar collection from the canary islands he imports oh wow and that's like really really good stuff yeah wow that's great that's a great place yeah that's a wonderful place um i was wondering how how px would um actually pair with cigars if it would be a i i was wondering you know could that be a like especially an aged px you know more concentrated a little less sear it's, it's weird because px gets more concentrated but it gets less sweet isn't that strange yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, it's a very it might be all right you, you ever see those like um rum rum soap cigars they'll sell sometimes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that i wonder how a px mm. cigar would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what made me think about it. Yeah, I, 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 I think your, your East India stuff would be nice with the cigars. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to more sherry's like that. That stuff is just is just so wonderful. It's like because it doesn't. It, there's there's a few reasons. It actually uses Pedro Jimenez. Um, one problem with cream sherry is it doesn't always use Pedro Jimenez uh, wine. It sometimes uses what you call. Um, in Germany was Zeus Reserve, is that it? Yeah. The um, unfermented Reserve, wine, yeah. yeah. They have that. Um, yeah, it's unfermented grape must. Unfermented yeah. grape must, yeah. That. Um, I don't know, it, I don't know, it might change the taste. I, I, I kind of, when, I, when the blend has actual PX in it, it's more exciting to me. Um, it's just more complex. Um, traditionally, it was actually made with a kind of, um, a grape um, um, syrup and the EU laws don't allow that actually because it's whatever they don't allow the syrup to be made but uh, historical writers have said it was actually better when they were allowing to make it with syrup who knows but but certainly yeah the East India stuff I think would I think this would be great with cigars or with it's um <laughs> One way to find out. <laughs> yeah, find out. actually, I have some cigars here. I can do a macanudo right now. Now, now I want to. I'm trying to be a good boy. Now I want to drink. I want a cigar. <laughs> I'm just here. To, I'm just here not, to screw. Not I'm just, I'm run, just here to run. put the. <laughs> <laughs> here to throw sand in the eyes. All right, uh, guys. It was a great conversation. Um, I got to go, but um, 
Nice talking to you. Yep. Okay, let's wrap it up here. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, guys. So that was it for the, this episode about Sherry. Thank you, Neil, for uh, joining us. Thank you, Hassel. Thank you, JP. Thank you, JP. Uh, <laughs> with us, as always. <laughs> and uh, until next time, um, cheers. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, 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 cheers. All right. Okay. <laughs>